Hi there, this is Dunmesh from Pixel Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it an awesome one. Today, we're going to be talking about modern frequency separation. Now, we have learned several ways to do frequency separation, right? One where we take the brush tool and we paint with the brush tool. Another where we use the mixer brush. Some where we make a selection and blur that area. All that is fantastic. But with the modern frequency separation method, it gives you better results. You spend way less time and it's so much easier. I'm super excited to share that with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now the concept here is pretty simple. As Photoshop updates and as it introduces new tools, it is important that we move with the times and update our own techniques. We will be separating the frequencies, but the way we treat those is going to be a little different. Now before we do frequency separation, it is highly recommended that we remove the blemishes so that we don't have to deal with them separately in the texture layer and the color and the toning layer. To save yourself the time, remove the blemishes now. And here's a tip on how you can see all of the blemishes. Simply click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose black and white. Now what would that do? Just simply reduce the reds. Don't show it to the model or the subject. This will just enhance all of the blemishes. And then you can play with the yellows to make sure that everything is just very much visible. Now you can remove blemishes in whatever way that is comfortable to you, whatever method is your favorite. For this example, we're just going to make a copy of the background layer by selecting it and then pressing Ctrl or Command J. Let's just name it Remove Blemishes. Now you can use the brand new Remove tool if you wish. Make sure your Photoshop is updated to see it. And then you can just zoom in. Make sure sample all layers is unchecked. Otherwise, the black and white adjustment will be taken into consideration. So just paint over that. And it does a pretty good job. But sometimes you may want to try other methods as well. So if you want to be absolutely accurate, you can use something like the patch tool. With the patch tool, you can just make a selection, right? You want to make sure source is selected and drag it to a place that is similar without blemish. There you go. Press Ctrl or Command D. Let me share with you an example where the patch tool can be better than the remove tool in some cases. So let's say we remove this blemish by dabbing just like that. But it created a smooth surface. It's not mimicking the skin texture right there. So for that little area, we would use the patch tool. Make a selection around it and drag it and drop it to a place with similar texture without a blemish and it does a much better job. So let's take the time to remove all the blemishes. You can use these methods and I'm going to speed the video to save you time. Seems like we have removed most blemishes. Let us take a look at the before and after. So here is the before. And here is the after. Major difference. Now, if you're a professional photographer or a commercial retoucher and you make an income from your work, you can also consider using plugins to save you all this time. So let's save it as a part of history. So let's open up history and I'm going to take a snapshot. So this is saved right here. Let's delete both of these layers. With this plugin, it all happens automatically and you can test it absolutely for free by clicking the link in the description. I'll have an instruction on how to get the free trial. With the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J and then let's go to filter. And this is the plugin retouch for me, retouch for me, heal right here. It automatically analyzes the blemishes and as you can see, it's gone. And you can control the sensitivity as to how many blemishes you want to remove using this slider right here. If I wanted to remove all the blemishes, keep sensitivity all the way to 100, you can check make mask and hit apply. And it's all gone, just like that. And in this layer, as you can see, it's just the removed areas. So it's absolutely non-destructive. So just with one click, here's the before, here's the after, all the blemishes gone. Now, I absolutely don't recommend this if you're a beginner, but if you're a professional and time is of the essence, you can consider it. I'll leave a discount code also in the description. So let's go back to how we did it manually. So this is how it was. Let's turn off the black and white layer. And there you go. Before, after. We did a pretty good job too. Now it is time for us to separate the frequencies. Separate the image into high frequency and low frequency. Both of those frequencies combined will give you the same image. In the high frequency layer, you work with texture and the low frequency layer, you work with color and tone. So how do we do that? Again, to understand how it works, there is a video that you can watch. Just download the Piximperfect Frequency Separation Action. It's for free. Link is in the description. And this is the action. By the way, once you download the action to load the action, 
you would click on this hamburger icon right there and then click on load actions, locate where the action is and just open. Now you have to determine whether you're working on an 8-bit image or a 16-bit image. Just look right here, it is 8-bit RGB8. Another way to figure that out is going to image, mode and right here 8 bits per channel is selected so it is 8-bit and if it is 8-bit, play the 8-bit action right here. Click on play, Gaussian blur will show up right here. Then you can zoom into any area of the skin, take it all the way to the left hand side and slowly and gradually increase it to the point where all the skin texture goes away. The lower the value, the more you have to work, the higher the value, the less you have to work, but the lesser control you will have. For this example, I'm going to pick 8, hit OK, and it is separated. Now combined, this group gives you the exact same image. So if I turn it off and turn it on, it is the exact same image. But if you open it, you'll find two different layers. Here you have the low frequency where you just have the color and the tone and not the details. And then you have just the high frequency where you have the details. Let's turn everything back on. And now, here is the trick. Earlier with frequency separation, what did we used to do? Let's turn on low frequency first. And for now, I've kept high frequency turned off. Above low frequency, we would create a new layer and then we would take the brush tool, decrease the flow to about 1 or 2% and then take a sample and paint. This would take ages. For example, we hold the Alt key or the Option key, click here to take a sample and paint right here. And it would take a lot of skills for you to paint in a way that looks realistic and is not flat. Even after going so fast, it is taking me so much time to get this away and still it's not perfect. I have to paint with dark shades and bright shades and after so much trouble, here's the before, here's the after, just that little area. Let's turn on high frequency, in other words the texture, let's take a look, here's the before, here's the after. It's okay, it's not the best, it needs way more work. Another technique was, you would make a copy of the low frequency layer, again this just spreads out stuff and then you can make a selection of a particular area like this one and then blur that area or use mixer brush. Instead of doing all that with newer technologies coming into Photoshop, why not take advantage of it? No, I'm not talking about generative film. All you have to do is to turn off the high frequency layer, make a copy of the low frequency layer. So with the low frequency layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. We could have also done it on a blank layer, but this way it is faster and it has some advantages. We'll get to it later. And then select the remove tool. You want to make sure sample all layers is turned off because we're going to be using some adjustments. All you have to do is to just paint over this area and it's gone. Similarly, just do it and it's so much quicker than before. Let's turn on high frequency. Here's the before, here's the after. This is damn fast. Let's turn it off again and let's paint this area. And just like that, even that is fixed. Let's turn it on, let's zoom out. Here's the before, here's the after. <laughs> Look how fast it is and I wasn't even being careful. Let's go back to how it was and to see the unevenness even better, let me share with you a tip. So select the topmost layer and create a curves adjustment layer. We clicked on the adjustment layer icon and then chose curves and just take it down. Just like this and you can play with the curves. The point is that you can see all the unevenness clearly. Now you can change the blend mode from normal to luminosity so that it doesn't make it very saturated. So this helps a lot just to see where the unevenness is. And then you can go back to low frequency copy where we were working with the remove tool. Select the remove tool and you want to again make sure sample all layers is turned off otherwise the curves will be taken into account. Now let's just remove stuff. Now you can adjust the curves anytime to ensure you see everything that you're looking for. So I just lightened it a bit so I can work on the darker areas. Let's go back to low frequency copy. So here we have done most of the evening outs. Let's turn off the curve and turn on high frequency and take a look. This is amazing. And if you think it's too much, by the way, I renamed this layer to remove tool. You can decrease the opacity of frequency separation layer or the remove tool layer up to you. And you can keep it a little bit natural. That's all up to you. Now, again, if you really don't have the time to do all this, I do recommend that you work with this. You 
get absolute control. But if you don't have the time and if you have hundreds and hundreds of photos, you can again use plugins. And I actually created an action that works with all of the Retouch For Me plugins. And again, if you want to try it out absolutely for free, you can check out the link right here or check the link and the instructions in the description. It is much easier that way. So here's my action, Pix Auto Retouch Actions. And by the way, these actions are free, but they require you to get the plugins. So I'm just going to share that with you. And again, here's a complete video on how to batch process all of this. So you can watch that later. I'm going to play the basic action. Let's play it. And there you go. It is done. So let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before and here is the after. It looks pretty good, looks natural. Even the body is retouched. So overall, here's the before and here's the after. I kind of like it. So first of all, it did remove the blemishes in this layer and then it did dodging and burning. So here's the before, here's the after. If you want more of it, you can get into the plugin and increase the intensity. Then it added depth. So again, before, after. If you want more depth, you can increase the opacity from right here, but I'm going to keep it at 50%. Then it did clean up of the eyes before, after, before, after. Did a pretty good job. And it added some contrast in the eyes. So overall, before, after. And the entire concept here is to use the latest technologies, whether it's the remove tool or third party plugins and use it in your actual professional workflow. And before we go, let us do a quick recap. Before doing any frequency separation, remember, it is highly advisable that you remove the blemishes. And to see the blemishes, you can create a black and white adjustment layer and just take down the reds, adjust the yellows so that you can see the blemishes properly and then remove the blemishes. Once you have done that, separate the frequencies, high frequency layer, low frequency layer, and you can easily do that with the Pixinperfect frequency separation action, or you can find any frequency separation action online. Just make a copy of the low frequency. So with the remove tool, just paint on the unevenness. To see the unevenness properly, you can also create a curves at the top, just darken it. That way, you're able to see everything properly. And then you can turn back on high frequency. Don't forget to turn off the curves and control the opacity if you want more natural results. So for this example, I'm going to set it to about 60% and there you go. Done. So that's all for this one. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Uh -oh.